GBHL logo. I've lost the file. Just imagine the letters of GBHL forming a logo. Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers Town, Chiba Show YouTube video. You're here with your host, Chiba Show Damien, and this is my hobby vlog number 59. Oh, yes, I'm back. So, um, yeah, here we are with uh, the hobby vlog that I presume is called um, Hobby. I'm just trying to think. I'm, I'm recording a couple of these at the same time. Sorry. I presume this is Shire, Project Shire 1. Um, so, at the end of uh, at the end of the last, maybe two, I guess, depending on how tight the other one, at the end of the last hobby vlog, I set up my whole brand new crazy idea for the last half of the year, the, the Project Shire, to paint a huge Hobbit army before the year is out. That's that's kind of where I'm focusing my efforts. And um, in the last video, which, um, as I'm recording this, was recorded about a week ago, um, I was saying that that night I was going to go away and basically unpack my first warband and get them cleaned up and start making progress. And um, I'm happy to say that um, that's what I've done. I said in the last video, I think, something along the lines of by the time we get to my next hobby vlog, we'll know if, we won't know if the project is completed, but we'll know if the project is going to be abandoned. Because if I haven't, um, if I haven't completed kind of my you know, next warband within the allotted time frame, I won't be able to do the army. And the good news is, the signs are good. Um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of halfway through them, and I'm, I'm making good progress on them, which I'm quite, which I'm quite excited about, really. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been a fun week, and I think I'm right in saying that all my recent hobby vlogs they haven't really been um, stage by stage. I think generally speaking, I've done my intro, and then I've shown you what I've done over the last couple of weeks, and it's normally finished. There's not often a lot of progression between them. But I thought um, because this is a slightly longer project. Um, to give myself some more motivation, I'd actually give you a kind of um, a, a, a middle stage. So essentially what I'm doing now is I'm about halfway through my first Warband of Hobbits. So I'm going to take you over and show you them. And then hopefully in about a week's time when they're finished, I'll show you them again. So it'll be, um, it'll be a little more of a kind of stage by stage, I guess. Not stage by stage, but a couple of stages um, within this hobby vlog, which should hopefully be quite cool. But yeah, we're still we're still on course on that. So I, um, I assembled those... Um, hobbits that I'll show you, those metal hobbits, and started painting on the warriors. And then what I've also been doing here, and I'm not going to show you these in any detail because they'll come up over as the weeks go on, but on this tray here, um, let me just get rid of these, I'll just bring this forward a bit. Da -da -da -da. I've got the Forge World Hobbit Heroes. So you can hopefully see there's a couple still on the kind of sprues there, but these are all, there's also the, the fine cast Citadel ones here to be fair, but these are all the new, um, well they're not that new anymore really, although they're a year old, but all the kind of Hobbit heroes um, from Forge World, um, so you know, Will Whitford and um, Baldo Tuppany and um, Lotho Sackville Baggins and Gaffer Gamgee and all that, and I've been, whilst I've been painting uh, those guys in my painting time, I've also, any time I've been downstairs with Emma watching the telly, I've been cleaning these guys up, um, ready to, ready to start. So I said, I said in my last, um, my last hobby vlog, uh, that I'd let you guys decide which of the heroes I'd start on in the comments. So I've been cleaning all of those up to, um, to, to make sure I had the option. So obviously by the time you watch this, um, I'll know which one it is because um, the time will have passed and I will have read the comments in the old hobby vlog. At the time I'm recording this, um, the comments haven't gone on the old hobby vlog. So such is the craziness of that. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm painting a lot and kind of cleaning up the next lot. And I think that's, um, I think that's gonna be the important thing um, for this project going forward to make sure that there's, you've always got the next bit, um, bit ready. The other fun thing um, about, about this is that today, which is the, where are we? The 25th of July? Yeah, Saturday the 25th of July. I've had a really long conversation with Tom um, Harrison like about, about Seven Stones and about the magazine and all this sort of stuff. And um, it's been really, really good and really positive. And we've had a little jig around of a few things. And I'm now I think I'm going to need to paint some models for issue 11, which might, not too many models, but already, um, you know, the, the idea that something might come up. I think I might have to paint a few models. Now, I don't think it will necessarily disrupt this project, but um, it hasn't taken long before something's come up where I'm like, oh, God, I really need to paint those. So um, we'll, we'll see how we get on with that. Um, I don't think... Uh, I think it might make this project take a little longer than I thought it would have done, but it won't It won't derail it, and I'm still hoping... I'm still thinking that these guys can be done by the end of the year. So that's where we are. So 
that's uh, that's what's been going on. Um, I'm now going to take you over to the table and I'll um, I'll show you where they are at the moment. Okay, so here we go. Here are the little dudes as they currently stand. I think at the end of the last time we vlog, I was debating exactly which ones I was going to paint, and I've, uh, they're not really separated now. But what I settled on was um, two packs of militia. So that's eight militia, five archers, and two sheriffs. So in that way, I've got 15 models here, and the bow limit's right. So you know, as once I painted all these, it would be a kind of legal army because I'd have I'd have five bows. And what I what I think I mentioned to you before was that I was going to do over my 60 models I want them to have a selection of different quite bright colours like kind of red, green, blue and yellow and what I would try and do to save time is paint all of one colour first and as you can hopefully see already I've gone for the reds first so what I've done is by taking two full packs of militia and painting some red onto them and then taking one full pack of archers and then two of the sheriffs I ensure that the different sculpts are hopefully even evenly spread that, that's the kind of plan and then once these guys are done, I'll do the same for blue, same for green, same for yellow, and so on and so forth. So here they go. They're um, they're beautiful little models, but obviously they're not finished yet. So I think I might I might take more time over this when they're finished. But this is the current state of them, and this is I'm about I'm about ten hours into the project. So bear in mind that there's fifteen of them. So that means they're what does that make them about? Oh, things I should have worked out. Um, I don't know, forty five minutes each, something like that. Probably um, have been spent on them so far. And what I'm currently in the middle of is the red. So this guy's red jacket is now finished. And um, I'm not sure how well it's showing up on camera as ever, but um, I'm quite pleased with it. And there are actually, I think there's five layers, including the base coat. So there's a base coat, a shade, then highlight, highlight, and shade. And I'll take, I'll show you those colours in a minute. But that is the fit, that is the finished effect on it. Um, and if I go and take you to uh, this guy here, this guy has only had the base coat and shade put on. So you can hopefully see there that he should look a fair bit kind of messier. His jacket should look a fair bit messier when compared to that guy. Yes, yeah, so this guy should have some quite nice kind of smoother blends on him. Um, kind of like little subtle orange highlights on the edge, whereas this guy should look a bit kind of uh, muddy. But that's, that's, the, um, that's the end project. Um, I've done half of these because I've used slightly different colour schemes as I'll show you in a minute. I've done half of these and they took an hour and a half. So basically the three extra layers that this model has over this model um, take uh, basically, well, it'll be somewhere in the region of um, 10 minutes per model, I would say, on the red. Is that about right? Something like that, 10, 15 minutes per model. It's probably closer to 15 minutes. So it's kind of almost five minutes a layer. So I would I would take five minutes for a red layer, five minutes for another red layer, and five minutes for another. So he he is about 15 minutes ahead of this guy in in short. But it's it's kind of tricky to keep track of because you batch painting. But you can hope you can hopefully see the difference there. And what I've gone for as a color scheme is I actually used um I used this. I dug this out. It was quite fun kind of playing with all more reds that I don't normally use. It's scab red, um, which is an old Citadel color. The current version of this is corn red. And as you can see, they're they're not too dissimilar. Um, scab red, which is here on the left, is is a little more muted. I think you'd say it's a little more, almost a little more pastely, which is what I wanted uh, to begin with. Um, and so I've gone. I wanted that slightly more natural colour rather than that kind of bright red that you, you sometimes get, essentially. So I base coated them in scab red. Um, I then shaded them with a mix of. I think it was. Um, so just kind of muddy mix. I think it was like Abad and Black and Rhinoxide or something. It was a, it, that, that kind of shade that you can see quite a lot of here, which is a kind of dark brown mix. And then when highlighting, for no particular reason, just that I was experimenting with reds, I used Red Gore um, for my first layer. And Red Gore is currently Wasdaka Red, but these two, as you can hopefully see, are actually really, really different. That's a much, much brighter red. So I was actually I didn't use my Daca red. I, I stuck to my old pot of um, of red gore, and I didn't. I wasn't. You know these these old pots. This one and my my scab red. They are getting a bit on the dry side, but um, I thought it didn't really matter because I'd only ever have to use it for these 15 models. There wasn't going to be an issue with kind of matching colour. Um, so yeah, I, I used a highlight of red gore um, on them, and then I highlighted this guy with deathcore brown, which is essentially the same. Um, the same colour scheme I use for Moranans, and that's where if you, let me try and find another one where maybe the highlights are a little more obvious. So if I take this chap here, you should be able to see a kind of, hopefully, kind of 
orangey highlights. You can hopefully see on, on the very on the very edges. And then what I did, and this is always how I, how I kind of paint my fabric now, I went back to that base colour, which was scab red, and painted it painted it in as a as a kind of shading layer essentially. Um, but this time actually just for the fun of it I used corn red, which is the which is the kind of equivalent, so it's slightly different. But it just means that what's actually on here is is five different colours. Um, five entirely different colours are, are in that jacket, um, but two of them are, are, are incredibly similar, and you hopefully get a very nice kind of transition. Um, so that that's kind of that's kind of where the, the reds are. Um, everything else you see in the uh, the other thing I should point out is that at the moment all of their flesh is done. So I, I started with that, so we can hopefully see his little hobbit face there. I have I have painted eyes on these guys. Um, I, I kind of considered not doing it but in the end I decided that I would want to and I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with how the kind of faces have come out. I'll go and grab you a couple of these um of these hobbits to show you how the skin's coming together. He's looking pretty cool. Um it's a well, what did I use for this? It's a cake it's a dwarf flesh base coat, uh Reichland flesh cake flesh shade shade, Cadian flesh tone highlight and Kislev flesh um highlight. Um, that's coming quite good. So the flesh is finished on these guys and then I've moved on to the red, essentially. Everything else has just had a base coat and then a kind of uh, a wash, as it were, in this kind of mixed up, um, this mixed up uh, brown black color I used. I didn't want to use a wash because I'm trying to speed up the process. And I've found recently that the washes are great for tying everything together, but um, I almost always end up going over them completely because of the slightly glossy finish. So instead of doing that, I mixed up a, um, this kind of dark brown colour, I'm not sure up well on here where he hasn't been highlighted, this um, black dark brown colour and kind of um, used that as my shade across all my different browns and then I'll highlight them up um, differently as they come. So that, that's how they're getting on. Um, they're lovely, lovely little models. This is another one, so his red won't have been done but his skin's been done. Looking quite cool. Lots and lots of character. And obviously I've only done half of them, as I said. Um, it's not because I've kind of given up halfway through a stage. It's very unlikely me to have finished kind of seven of them to, you know, completely finished standard. And, you know, as I said, there was three more colours that I've done on this guy. So why would I do half of them? It's because I'm going to get, do a bit of variation in the colour scheme um, to, to mix it up. So it's going to be very, very subtle. But I've done one test model, and I don't even know if you'll be able to pick up on this. But if I take um, the one on the left... Has had the colour scheme that I just showed you. So here he is. And the one on the right, the only difference, it's exactly the same colour scheme, except instead of the Deathclaw brown, you can't really, the highlights aren't really reading on that. I'm trying to get something, I think the highlights are pretty good on that. So instead of the Deathclaw brown highlights, which you can see on the left, any kind of orange tones there, this guy's had tusk or fur highlights. So at that very top highlight stage, for um, for one of them, I used Deathclaw Brown, and for the other one, I used Tusk or Fur. And I just thought all that hopefully does is it adds a bit of variation, um, even amongst the reds, hopefully. And the way I decide to differentiate it is anything fancy, so like a waistcoat, like this guy has, or a kind of jacket, like this guy has, I thought I'd use the um, Deathclaw Brown, because it basically gives a kind of, I think it makes it look slightly fancier in a way. And then for anything less fancy, so this guy is basically wearing just a, a shirt. All he does is while he does his hammering, I'm going to use the tusk or flesh, and that might mute it a bit. So similarly, this guy here has just got a kind of red undershirt on, so he hasn't had his highlights done because he's going to get the tusk or fur um, blend. So there we go. That's um, that's the kind of plan. So I've done this. I've I've completed um, completed nine of them, I think. So I've got six more now. To the next stage is to do the red highlights on six more of them um, and that's what I'll be that's what I'll be getting on with and I've I've actually I am painting these in a very different way to normal I'm not sure it is going to be quicker but it feels quicker to me and it's it's an attempt to kind of help me through the process and basically what I'm doing is completing a stage entirely completing it so their flesh is now finished and now after tonight the red will be finished and then I'll move on to the kind of dark brown that I've got around them and then I'll move on to the tan and then I'll move on to the shirts and so on and so forth and what I'm basically doing is finishing a stage every single night. 
Um, and it's a very satisfying process and allows me to feel like I'm making real progress. And I've actually got ideas for my next hobby vlog, potentially the next one or the one after that, to do this as a proper stage by stage video um, and show you how they're working. So that's the kind of plan. But um, for the minute, they're going, they're going really, really well. This is also a good example of why I paint in the way I do. This guy here has had his skin finished. And he's looking quite good, I think. But as you can see, there's an awful lot of skin now on his coat because of how recessed his um, his skin is. So um, I find certainly, maybe I'm just clumsy, but you need to be careful and almost do that classic painter trick of painting from the inside out. So you paint his um, paint his face first um, because you're going to get some paint on anything that's kind of outside his face, like the jacket. So I'll just um, tidy that up as and when I get to this kind of bluey grey layer that I've got um, going. Uh, if you're still wondering, I'm not sure how much I've ever talked about this, but if you're wondering at all why I've already done the bases on them, it's because my base technique, which there is a video for somewhere on the channel, involves dry brushing. So as soon as I'm dry brushing these, it's obviously going to go over their little feet. Um, and so I decided um, to do the dry brushing, the messy stuff first, um, so that then I can pick out their feet and make sure that that doesn't kind of ruin the paint job at the end. Um, I'm sure I've talked about these before, but I use... Um, bottle caps as, as kind of cheap paint handles. I really like the Citadel paint handles. I, I, I use them a lot now. I've got this here, but I've only got um, I've only got four, so they're no good for this. So for my um, rather than buy, buy, being a crazy person like Steve Crow and buying 15 of them, I've decided to um, go back old school and pick up these little um, lovely little handles. So there we go. That, that's about where we where we are. We're about we're about 10 hours into the process. I think 11 hours into the process or something. And I genuinely think we're about halfway through or something like that. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Um, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be like painting kind of 15 hobbits in a, in a batch. But I'm, I'm genuinely pleased with how they're coming along. I'll, I'm happy with my colour scheme so far. And I'm happy with the results that this is, this is getting, um, getting me. And I'm quite excited to see um, how, far they, how far they come on. So there we go. That's, um, that's me kind of halfway through. I was hoping to paint 15 hobbits in two weeks. Um, I'm a week into that and they're about halfway through so I'm, I'm feeling pretty good and pretty positive. So my hope um, is that I'm now going to cut the camera and I'll come back in the future, it'll be a week's time or so, and all 15 of these will be finished and then we'll be able to um, wrap up the vlog and wrap up July. But um, we'll see, um, as, as, we, as ever we know in this hobby, um, things have a way of kind of getting in the way and stopping progress. But um, there we go, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of little, uh, little halfway stage and hope to see you very soon. And so I am delighted to say that two weeks later they are finished. Here's my finished warband of red farthing hobbits. And so, yeah, as I said, it's two weeks later. Um, I was hoping to get them done in a week, but I didn't. So all told, the project's taken three weeks. But um, here they all are. I'm really happy with them. So I thought I'd just take you through them. So here we go. Um, so we've got this little archer dude. Super cool. Uh, last time you saw them, their flesh was done and their eyes were done. And I think the red was done on most of them. So a lot of what I've done since then has been the, the browns. Um, there are basically three browns on here. Um, that they're all they're all on this hobbit actually. There's the kind of um, actually I think there's four in total. But I have a kind of um, a Mournfang brown base for the trousers, a Rhinox hide base for the jacket, and then basically a Rakarth flesh base for the shirt. And there's also a tan. There's also a Steel Legion drab tan um, that is on other models. Like that so we have um, we have this guy. Um, they're all awesome. I love them to bits. I really enjoyed it. Um, this guy shouting, lovely little scarf. Really enjoyed doing the buttons. Um, also, want to highlight out the bases here because the bases were largely done in the same style that I normally do. But I deliberately, um, I knew I wanted to do this for my oh, Hobbit Army um, from the first time I, I got them. What I've done is use a brighter flock. I've used a summer flock instead of the scorched brown, scorched grass I normally use. So it's it's greener. Hopefully, it looks a bit more lush. And I've also added in um, a flower on every model, a little flower, um, what they call tuft. And those come from Mr. Andrew Pennington. So um, he he posts up his his trees and his flowers a lot in the Lord of Rings trade group. Go and check them out because they really are awesome. He makes really great stuff, and I bought, I got a load of these off him. Um, a while back um, specifically for this project and it was actually when they arrived it was one of the things that did make me um, double down on doing the Hobbit, Hobbit army this year so we've got this guy who's as you can see has got a um, he's got a, like an orange flower I don't think I can get much more light in here 
You've got an orange flower on him there, um, which is cool. And he's got the kind of I think I showed him off a bit in a bit of detail on the last one, so you can see how far he's come on. Um, he's got a red shirt and this kind of he's a workman, so he's got this kind of basic um, brown uh, apron on with some kind of metallic tool coming out of there, which is quite cool. Um, got this dude who's probably one of my least favourite militia poses, I think. Not overly keen on this guy, but he, he's still cool. Yeah, and with the flower attached to the base. I know they're always meant to represent the Scarron and the Shire, and it's meant to be a bit desolate, but I just, I've always wanted my um, my little Shire army to to have um, flowers on them. Yeah, that's, uh, this is the same sculpt as that again, yeah, but this time for variation. Um, I added a shirt. This is another one of the reasons that I wanted to paint all the reds together because what it meant is that by painting them in a batch I could make sure that these two who both have red on have different bits of red on. I could make sure one's got a red hat and one's got a red shirt whereas if you were just painting a bit of red in every batch you might end up accidentally kind of painting the same part twice. So whenever I've duplicated a pose their, their key colour of red in this case um, should be on a very different bit. So I'll give you another example of that. And we've got this guy who I think is one of my favourite models. This is absolutely brilliant. What an absolute legend of a hobbit this guy is. His fancy um, fancy waistcoat. Lots and lots of fun to paint on that. As you can see, there's also a there's a kind of extra key colour that's coming to these guys, which is uh, what looks... It's very dark on here. It looks like black. And I, did, I just thought that black would go with red for some of these slightly more well-to-do hobbits. But um, it's actually come out far bluer. It's far bluer than it looks on the camera. At the moment, which is quite cool. So um, some of these, some of these kind of red filing hobbits also have a bit of blue in them. Uh, his trousers there are the tan colour that I alluded to um, earlier. Please him come out. He's got some fantastic mutton chops. And as I said, if we go and grab this other sculpt here, you see that I've made sure that the bits of them are painted completely differently. So the trousers are different, the waistcoat's different, the hat's different, and the jacket's different. So even though they're both tied together by red in this case, there's still some um, some nice variation. Um, on display. Let's see here how he's come together. Quite cool little hobbit. There you go. I think the archers might be my favourite. All, all the archer sculpts are just fantastic. Such great character. This guy's really pleased with kind of how his face came out. He he just kind of landed very well right from the start. Quite pleased with that. Again, a lovely little flower tuft that really brings them to life. Um, went for that kind of basic shirt colour. Um, I didn't really talk. I obviously didn't talk too much about the shirt colours um, and the brown colours, but they're they're basically all everything else that I haven't talked about is is basically three colours. So what I'll do is to go from memory. I think the shirts were a base coat over a calf flesh. They were then um, shaded with bane blade brown. They were then given a top highlight of something like pallid witch flesh, almost pure white, and then they would be given calf flesh again to knock them back, and that's my um, a kind of shading wash, and that's my kind of process now for fabric. I do a base coat, a shade, a highlight, and then I use the the base coat again to kind of merge the the shade and the highlight, and I find it work, works um, works really well. So here, this dude here, running for all of his axe. Um, I think we showed off these two sculpts, um, the two versions of the sculpt in the first one, um, where he obviously had flesh paint on his jackets, um, that's now been removed. See the kind of gold buttons he's got down there again. Sometimes it works, but it's weird. Sometimes it works better without the um, without the hand, it kind of holds the focus. But maybe not tonight. Too much going on behind there. That's cool. Um, we then got the next um, worker. This one doesn't actually have any red on him. Um, I thought that was all right for for a few of them not to have the key color on. You can see the kind of three browns there. He's got the the Steel Legion drab base um, apron. Again with that mysterious tool. He's got the Rakarth flesh shirt and he's got the Mournfang brown um, trousers. You also hopefully notice that um, their their weapons. Got a very pale wood. Let me show you a couple here. You see the haft of his axe there. Very, very pale. It's almost like a cream, and that was crack stone. And the reason for that, normally my weapon hafts are always, um, I don't know, Mornfang Brown or Rhinox Hide or Dryad Bark or something like that. But um, 
I, I was going through the old Scan and Shine book, which I've taken a lot of inspiration from, and I got the idea from there that they have really pale, pale wood for their weapons, um, which I really, really like. So I'm not sure I've emulated it particularly well, but it's um, I think it works as a kind of, it keeps, given they've got so much brown on the model for their clothing, it's quite nice to have this kind of much paler wood. Um, kind of makes it look potentially like pine or something, I don't know. Another awesome archer sculpt. I was really pleased with how his face came out. Lots of fun detail on this guy. They're really good fun to paint. I hope I still say that after I've done another three batches of them, but I'm certainly at the moment, I'd be quite excited about jumping in and doing another three. Uh, you've seen that guy in the red waistcoat. He's one of my sheriffs. There's only one of him in here. Seems quite good fun to do. This And his um, feather in his hat again, slightly fancy red coat. Buttons on the cuffs, a couple of buttons around the back there. Uh, which are nice, fun to pick out. Yeah, you can tell the sheriffs from their um, sheriff, sorry, from their uh, feathers in their hats. It's quite cool. And another one, this kind of um, oh, you get away from my house, like who I really, really like. I can't really remember. again. This um, obviously the the lights doing something a bit funny today, which making it a bit dark. But they're they're all a bit lighter, and that that black waistcoat is is actually a kind of blue. Um, but obviously it's just not showing up well today, but it's, it's okay. Still getting a nice kind of focus on it. A bit of detailing on the back there. And what I basically did, my kind of final stage, was that I think really makes them pop, was once um, once all their bits were done, I went around every model with Rakath flesh and basically hit any brown area, just the top highlights with some Rakath flesh, which is hands down my favorite color at the moment. And what that just basically do, maybe it's just the kind of lighter bits you can see right around here. It just brings all those bits to life. And I'll just pop that onto um, onto any straps and onto any kind of um, cuffs and things like that. And it really brought them to life. I, I loved that. So I've done um, models, some models in the past. This is the, the second sheriff of this batch. Came out really well. Just see if I can grab, maybe on this guy, because he had a lot of browns. If you imagine that, some of that, that kind of palest highlight around the apron is the Rakath flesh highlight and then there's a kind of very faint Rakath flesh highlight down all these straps which just helps to bring everything to life. So there we go, there is my, my first batch of 15 Hobbits um, which I'm really pleased with, they took three weeks, uh, 30, I'm going to talk about this a bit more uh, back on the sofa, they took, they took 30 hours from bliss start to, to completely finished. Um, in, in total, so it's about two hours per Hobbit, which um, which I'm really pleased with. Uh, I think, oh, if I had to choose, I think this guy wins wins for me this week. I really love him. I think the colours really popped on him well. So he's my he's my favourite. So I think he'll be the he'll be the um, unofficial leader of this of this warband. I think, but yeah, it's really cool. So there we go, fifteen Hobbits for you. Um, but I also just wanted to point out, which is, as a hobby vlog, that is the main project I worked on this week. If any of you watched Battle Streams of Middle Earth last week, you also would have seen this little guy, Snaga. So I painted Snaga up, basically I base coated him um, on one evening and then I, I painted him in the next evening on Battle Streams of Middle Earth with Steve. And I'm really, really pleased with him. Awesome little model. Um, Loads and loads of detail on this, but equally um, surprisingly fun and easy to paint. Um, I had a bit of a debate about whether or not these kind of plates on his legs are meant to be metal or leather. I went down the metal route, Steve went down the leather, but you know, they both they both look good, I think. But um, I had fun with my, it, the armour was just my Moranon Orc armour scheme. Um, so once I'd finished that, I was also, because he's a hero, I was pushing in some Reichland flesh shade into the armour, which is why the armour has a kind of red hue. I was really happy with how the skin turns out. Um, he's blue, um, which you obviously don't get a lot of. We don't see a lot of blue orcs, but he came out really well. Um, and also, it's not reading particularly well, I think, on my little screen. I don't know what it will look like when you're looking at it, but he's got red eyes, because um, Snaga has very, very distinct red eyes, which isn't, is again, isn't something that I... I would normally do, but I think it was appropriate for this guy because it's so iconic. But this is an awesome, awesome sculpt. Absolutely no reason to paint him whatsoever. I'm um, just doing him because uh, for Battle Streams in Middle Earth, but um, just another great one to get a, a big tick on. So uh, that's what I've painted um, in this during this hobby vlog. I've painted Snaga and I've painted 15 Hobbits, which I'm pretty happy with. So 
I'm going to um, end that here and pop over to the sofa and debrief and find out our final tallies for July. So there we go. My first 15 Hobbits are complete. And I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with them. So um, apologies if I repeat anything that I've said in any of those clips, but um, I, you know, I don't, I don't recall these things, record these king, things consecutively, so I don't necessarily um, uh, re remember exactly. But um, yeah, I'm really pleased with them. So ultimately, those 15 Hobbits, the Hobbits of uh, Red Farthing, as I've been calling them, are, um, they took me three weeks. Um, the the first progress clip um, where I said I'll hopefully be back in a week um, obviously it took a bit more than that um, and so yeah three weeks from blister to fully painted and honestly I'm pretty pleased with that um, as as I've sort of touched upon in that vlog I think I've been doing other hobby stuff as well so I think I feel like I showed you this maybe at the start um, in July but you should now see this is distinctly um, bigger and more primed. Uh, there's a whole lot of models here that have been cleaned up, um, ready to go. And as I think I said in the first clip, I've been doing that while I've been downstairs. So um, there were I lost a lot of kind of painting evenings to kind of cleaning up. So I feel I feel pretty good about it. I feel like I could have done those in two weeks um, if I wasn't working on anything else. But um, you know the whole the whole thing to begin with was set up quite optimistically. Can I? I don't know if I could do fifteen hobbits in two weeks, and if three weeks is the more kind of realistic. Um, uh, guide for me, and um, then that, that's what I'll go with. Remember that, as I said, this was planned for an event at the end of the year. Um, I don't think the event's going to happen, so I feel slightly less pressure in a way. Um, this, this losing a week here would probably have freaked me out if, if the event was definitely going ahead. Um, but obviously, this could all bite me in the arse if the event does turn up and I haven't finished them. But at the moment, I'm pretty pleased with that, and I think most importantly, I really enjoyed it really happy with how the um how they came out in the end i like the red the red reminds me of the color scheme um i think i mentioned that i was going on the original um color scheme in in this book um i, I adore I, sorry not i wasn't using the color scheme in here but i i was trying to emulate it but i absolutely adore the um the original games workshop shire army i just think i think it's beautiful i think it's one of the best painted armies they've ever done and um and there is a really good like kind of painting guide in there for the different the different colours that they use. And whilst I haven't necessarily been following it like colour for colour because I don't have them, I am looking at those shades of green and shades of blue and shades of red and trying to emulate them um, where I can because I just think they're re they're really nice. And I'm really happy with how my red came out. Um, this kind of like, quite muted, natural but still bright um, uh, red, which I'm, I'm very very happy with. And, and yeah, I also, I, I really enjoyed the process. I've got to say, I, I really enjoyed painting these guys. Um, there was there was nights where I was downstairs with them cleaning models up because we were watching kind of trash TV. And I wanted to be up here. I wanted to be working on them, which is a really good thing. Now, if I can sustain that through another three batches of 15, um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But, um, the, you know, the exciting thing for me is that um, yeah, I really enjoyed them, really happy with them. So I hope I hope you like them. Um, I've given you a little showcase of them all there. There'll be pictures at the end, but that's that's kind of the start of my Shire army. Um, and I'm really really pleased. Um, pleased with how the bases look. Pleased with how the flowers look. And yeah, it's given me a, it's given me a lot of encouragement really. So that's a big tick. Um, so three week three weeks to do fifteen hobbits, which again, um, you know, if you ask me that, that's five. You know, it's five hobbits a week. Um, I'd take that. I, I think I think at the rate I paint, I think that I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, if I can keep that up. And as I may have said in the other clip, forgive me if I did, um, it was 30 hours all in. So 30 hours I worked on a project. I, I, I kept really detailed notes on it uh, because as I mentioned in one of the earlier clips, I've got an idea for a, for a future hobby vlog that goes into more detail and I wanted to really work out how long it's taken. And yeah, it's about 30 hours, including clean up time and including basing. So 30 hours for the whole thing, which given this 15, it means there's two hours for a hobbit. And honestly, I, I think that's all right. For, for me, I'm sure some people will be appalled at how long that is, but I, I think they look quite good. You know, they're, they're models with lots of layers of highlights, um, their, their skin's painted with, and their eyes are painted, you know, so there's details on them. And I'd say, if, if you ask me at the start of this project, get a, get a Hobbit from the blister to be completely finished in two hours, I'd be, I'd be pretty pleased with that. So yeah, I'm very, very, very happy indeed with that. So, to the future, um, 
Oh god, I just realised I didn't get I didn't get the exact numbers up. Oh, I don't I don't need the exact numbers. But as as I've said, um, I've got this stuff ready, and this is really important that as soon as I finish a batch, I want to be able to start painting um, the next thing. And as I said in the last video, I think the next batch is going to be heroes. So I think um, you saw you saw this tray when they were all grey, and some of them were still not assembled. But I've now got all the kind of shire heroes here that I want to use. And over here, uh, I also intimated at the start that I'd had a chat with um, Tom Harrison um, about um, the, the new next issue of SBG um, that we've planned. And these models have all been cleaned up for this. So um, I, can, I can show you some of these guys, but basically these are, these are fellowship models. Um, some of you will have, will have, if you've been following my vlogs, I've painted a lot of um, fellowship models um, this year and I've been really enjoying it. And it's good to go back to some more classic sculpts. So I've got... Um, I've got a Gimli, um, an Aragorn and a Boromir. Uh, it's Aragorn and Boromir from the Breaking of the Fellowship set and Gimli from Defenders of Rohan. I've then got the four um, Hobbits from um, Weathertop, so the four kind of pre-Lorian Hobbits. Then I've got the four Hobbits from um, Breaking of the Fellowship, um, as, which are really cool, the kind of running ones. And I've also just got one more extra Sab. He's the Emmy Mule Sam, I think. He's um, It's just a cool pose. So I basically went digging through my collection looking for cool fellowship cool poses of the fellowship um in relation to uh, an upcoming issue of sbg so um you, you think on think on that how you will now um this is what i was saying might derail the project and um, i can't say exactly when i'm going to do these or if i'm going to do these before these but these are the models that are also now kind of uh, rushed to the front of the painting queue but um, before i do those i am going to um certainly start working on some Hobbit heroes as promised. So in the last vlog I asked you to choose um, which hero I should start with and I have to say there was an overwhelming winner and it was this little dude, Farmer Maggot. Um, and I was really surprised to be honest, I kind of assumed it would be one of the new ones. Um, but yeah, Farmer Maggot won, won loads, he got, he got loads of votes, he, he smashed all the competition he was he was comfortably the um the best choice. Uh, bizarrely, someone someone just voted for his dogs, and um, they just they said just do the dogs, um, which was just cool. But yeah, so far about it's one. Okay, oh, it's very late. Um, so I'm gonna do his dogs next. Him, I do him and his dogs. But I also um, as part of painting my Hobbit heroes, you've also inadvertently voted for someone else because. What I've decided is I've got these little batches, and if you can hopefully see them, you won't be able to recognise who they are, but there's kind of four heroes here, four heroes here, three heroes here, and three heroes here in this batch. And what I've kind of done is split them into um, thematic batches um, that would be useful to paint together, really. So alongside Farmer Maggot, I've got Farmer Cotton and Gaffer Gamgee. And the three of these, the reason I bunch these is they're essentially, they're all kind of, like uh, Gaffer Gamgee's not a farmer, but they're all kind of um, workmen, you know, farmers, gardeners, and they're not in any finery, so I think they'll be in a lot of browns and creams rather than the kind of brighter colours, so they'll be useful to paint together, essentially. So I've got those, but then of course those three models come with bonus models. So I've also got the three dogs, and I've also got the um, three flower pots from um, Gaffer Gamgee. So those nine models are going to be my next batch. Um, they're going to be the, ne the next thing I paint. Um, and then at some point, probably then, I might dip into these, I might do a few Hobbits, I might do one of the heroes, I don't, don't quite know, but I'll probably dip into that lot then to um, to kind of try next, as it were. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So, so there we go. Um, that's my next batch of heroes. Thanks so much for getting involved, and I'd like you to get involved again. So as we know... Um, I'm trying as much as possible to paint a batch of 15 hobbits as I've done and then a batch of hobbit heroes and then a batch of 15 hobbits and a batch of hobbit heroes. So I have my next batch of um, hobbit heroes ready to go. Sorry, next batch of warriors. I've got a full blister of archers, two full blisters of militia and then in this little blister I've got my um, two sheriffs and one archer. So it's exactly the same as I, as I had for my last 15, exactly the same ratios. I think that worked really well, it was a good batch to paint, and I got all those reds um, done, and there was a nice variation. So I painted the Hobbits of Red Farthing, and you now get to choose which um, farthing I do next. 
So um, I think broadly speaking, I'm doing a blue, a green, and a yellow. So all I want you to do in the comments is say what what um, color hobbits should these ones be? What's my key color for the next ones? Um, red, blue, or green? No, 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 <laughs> yellow, blue, or green. And um, just as I did for the the heroes, by the time um, I get to the by the time I'm ready to paint these guys because I've finished painting the heroes. I'll have enough comments to hopefully um, get a get a vote on that. So yeah, red, uh, blue, green, or yellow. Let me know in the comments, and that will um, direct the next hobby vlog. Um, I'm also mildly um, and oddly excited about the next hobby vlog because um, what we're actually doing at the moment. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it in the past, but um, we're going to stay with my parents for a while. So um, myself, myself and Emma have been um, self isolating. We've been kind of hermetically sealed in our house for the last two weeks. Emma's on a summer holidays from school now, so we've got this kind of long period. So um, we've been here for two weeks, and what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to go and live with my um, mum and dad. So they haven't seen Charlotte in um, in months, um, like properly, you know. And so we're going to go and stay there. We, we've we isolated for two weeks to make sure we haven't got it, and we're going to be able to um, go back to some form of normality with them for a few weeks, which is which is really exciting. Um, I, I've talked about being at their house like over Christmas breaks before and doing doing modelling and stuff. Um, but I'm taking my hobby stuff back and yeah, so my, my hope is that my next hobby vlog is exclusively comes from my, um, from our parents' house, which will be fun. Um, so I'll be doing it, shooting it in my old bedroom where my old Warhammer cabinets are and that sort of thing. So, um, the hope is that the bare minimum I want is to complete that project. You know, we're going back for a few weeks, two to three weeks, and I'd really like to think that those, um, those hobbit heroes could be completed within them you know it's, it's slightly difficult when you're staying there and there's, there's more hobby time sometimes and less hobby time sometimes obviously but that that's what i want to get done and who knows maybe maybe i'll be even more um lucky than that and also get some of those fellowship heroes done possibly um i've also got grishnak um he's here Whoa. grishnak's ready for our next um, battle streams in middle earth if you're watching that series with us with me and steve um, so I'm hoping to do the next Battle Streams Middle Earth from there as well. So um, you'll be, yeah, hopefully I'll get him done. So that that's my hope basically that the next um, the next one's entirely contained uh, there. And it'll put, put a nice little bow on that little trip before I get stuck into these guys. So there we go. That's the kind of that's the conclusion of the kind of hobby business for the vlog. But of course, as it is now the seventh of August and it's the first vlog in August, what we need to do. Is review July um, in my in my yearly goal to reduce the ratio of unpainted to painted models um, in my collection. So um, July, uh, shall I give you just as a heads up um, where we were was that well, I bought 128 models this year, and I had um, I just realised that oh there it is sorry I just realised I didn't bring something over that I needed. Not yet though. Yeah, so um, as of the end of June, I've bought 128 models and I've painted 88 models, so I was 30 behind. Um, so, this month, if we do the bad first, I bought a model. I did buy one, only one, but I bought it. Um, I was getting some hobby supplies from uh, Seventh City Collectibles, my good friends over at Seventh City, uh, which we've uh, recommended before. And I was getting loads of paints and all that. And I've extolled the virtues of their um, second hand um, section before. So I took a browse through and I found this little chap. And if you can see him from there, that's Tom Bombadil in his um, in his original Battle Against Middle Earth um, packaging. Um, cool model. Um, I don't have any particular use for this, but I knew that he was, a, oh, he was, a, he was on there at a very reasonable price. I didn't have him. And he does come up in Battle Games of Middle Earth. Now I grant you, he, at the rate we're going, he comes up in Battle Games of Middle Earth in about three years or something. Um, but he was a model that I, I will hopefully need at some point in my collection. I didn't have, so I picked him up. So yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of bonus shopping for me, um, picking up Tom Bombadil there. Um, so I got him. So that's 129 bought for the year, and I painted two. Two models wasn't great. I painted Dale Wine on foot, and I painted my Uruk High Scout drummer. 
Um, they feel like ages ago, right? Uh, so there's only two models completed, but, 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 and here's the big caveat on that. I also painted the vast majority of those Hobbits. Yeah, because I started those Hobbits on about July the 15th and painted the vast majority of them. But given that it's the, um, it's the 7th and I finished them yesterday, so they were finished on the 6th, um, my rule is they go into August tally. So whilst um, 2 is a bit distressing, um, it's kind of like when I did the Cobain and I painted the Cobain for most of a month and didn't get anything for them and then got 18 models for the next for the next month. It's very similar to that. Um, you know, purely on purely on paper, two doesn't sound very good, but I'm well aware that I actually painted the majority of 15 other models. And, of course, I did all this stuff. I cleaned up all these models ready to go. So my hope is that August is going to be a big month for, um, for painting models. I've already finished 16 models in August. Which are the 15 Hobbits and my Snaga. Um, so yeah, my hope is that it kind of swings back that way. And who knows, just trying to think about it, realistically, could I? I don't think I'm going to get these Hobbits, the next batch of 15 Hobbits painted in August, in all honesty. They'll probably move into September, but um, but who knows, there'll, there'll certainly be some a bit of a dent in the painting bar. So yeah, my, my hope is that August um, is going to be a pretty good month. You know, the, the way things are going, August should end up with maybe about 30 models painted, which are, which would be really cool. So yeah, that, that alone would be quite distressing, except, huge news, the third category that has not come into things yet this year, I sold 48 models. Oh yes, um, I, I've been saying throughout the year that, um, that part of it was gonna be um, selling models and um, to kind of reduce the ratio of things I didn't want. And I had a big, as part of kind of clearing through my collection, I had a big, big, big sort out, and I, I sold um, 48 models to, um, and I actually, I actually sold them to um, Seven City because um, they do the second hand um, uh, deal. So I, I had a bunch of spares, like kind of knackered old plastics and stuff that I was, I was never going to get around to. Kind of, I had, I've got 24 Mordor Orcs, like the set of 24 that everyone has to own. But then I had another 12 more Mordor Orcs, for example, like the plastic ones, so I just got rid of those. So it's that kind of thing, it was quite cathartic. And um, and yeah, so I, I got, I removed 48 unpainted models from my collection. And so, what that means is that now in total, um, I have 139 painted and sold and 129 bought. So for the first time all year, my ratio has improved. Yeah, because I've now reduced, I've removed whatever that was, 139 unpainted models from my collection and I've only added 129 um, across the year. Um, so yeah, I've overtaken the uh, the ratio for the first time. So um, I do have the percentages of my collection that are painted, and I'm seeing it change every month. But I'm going to reveal that at the end of December as the kind of big change uh, in the year. But for the first time this month, the percentage of my collection that is painted has has gone up. Um, uh, compared, you know, compared to the unpainted, the ratio of my collection that's painted to um, unpainted has improved. Which was, which was, of course, the whole goal. And bear in mind, all these six months, I've been playing the long game, right? I've been playing for this end bit where I kind of um, cleared out my collection a bit and painted a load of hobbits. So there we go. So that's exciting. And I've finally taken over. But what's even more exciting is I'm pretty sure now that by the end of next month, I'll also be able to overtake it purely on painted models, um, the, the way things are going. Because um, I'm already now on... I need to paint about another f 20 models to, um, to kind of overtake it. And my hope is that by the end of, maybe not the end of August, maybe September, but it, it won't be long before my actual painted tally um, alone overtakes my, um, my bought tally for the year, which is, which is really, really good and really, really promising. So there we go. Um, only two models in July, but um, certainly not a failure based on everything else I did. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, and, and yeah, think that things are the numbers are in the black for the first time all year. Woo and indeed, who? Now, I'll raise a, a cup of tea. Mm. Um, and and that's about it, I think, for this vlog. Um, I work continues apace on um, on Project Shire, and I hope to be back in 
probably somewhere between two and three weeks with an update. You know, we'll have to. I think I think how long it will take will basically decide. You know, once once I've painted those hobbits, those hobbit heroes, the farmers, whether or not I just do a vlog about those, or whether I also do something poss possibly from that fellowship pile. We'll have to, we'll have to wait and see for that. But um, yeah, that's the that's the kind of exciting um, news that's going on with me at the moment, and uh, it's been it's been a positive month. Um, so there we go. That's our results as of the end of July. Isn't it mad? Seven months into the year. It's nearly Christmas. Probably a Christmas like none of us have known before, but it is nearly Christmas. Um, there we go. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope um, this has been a pleasant um, vlog and entertained you for a while. And I will hope to see you in the next one before too long. Until then, please stay safe. Don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your Hobbit host by clicking on the links below. Um, like us on Facebook, support your hobby, hobby and happy strategy battle game.